Hello again, and welcome in part 2 in the biggest naval battle in the history of conflict of nations World War 3 and today we continue our campaign and this beautiful war with the next stages of it. So now the Asians they are trying to uh, slip away from the bay uh, in, in the north of Palermo but I am trying so hard here to push forward with my attack submarines to prevent them from advancing from there because if they are going to advance from there they can flank us from both sides and they can take us out so I would never ever let them do that but here i am going to speak about two details very important details the asians they are using baits they are using motorized infantry to sail in the water as bait because here i don't know in all of these naval radars i don't know which is uh, a ship or which is an aircraft carrier or which is an infantry or anything else you understand so in this case they are sending some infantry there from that bay so we can uh, automatically engage them and take them out in that case we will use our attack and we will wait 60 minutes for the next attack that's a smart move but there is another detail that they don't know maybe one infantry will have an HP a very low HP when it is um, on the water you understand but my attack submarines they hit ships with 94 with the bonus of the high seas of course in that case when I take that motorized infantry in one single strike my attack submarines they will strike again after 10 seconds i guess because it will complete its full scale attack so in that case using this kind of bait is not going to be very efficient because my attack submarines will strike again if you want to use a bait you can use something very heavy such as um an aircraft carrier for example because it have 100 hit points and the next very important thing here so Iran is trying to slip away from that uh, bay from there from that canal but he only have attack submarines attack submarines if he is going to pass by from there he is going to be in shallow waters and he is going to have a huge penalty on his attack submarines in that shallow waters because they will have 50% of their HP points also it's going to have not going to benefit from the 25% of the attack so it's going to be a huge gamble from them and it's not going to be smart because I'm going to stay in the high seas and I'm going to continue attacking them with my attack submarines with of course the plus 25% of attack imagine 25% of attack is so much from 75 to 94 it's something very respectable so here we are trying to play with the numbers we are trying to play with the statistics because in this case everything is calculated some of you say in this kind of huge wars everything is going to bombard like recklessly everyone in his uh, attack range no in this kind of wars you have to calculate everything first you have to calculate the time of your attacks second you have to calculate the range of your attack so, third you have to calculate your bonuses, the bonuses of your kind of um, geometry you are in, high seas or shallow waters or anything, because in this kind of waters, uh, corvettes and attack submarines will be affected in this case, you understand? So be careful and you have always to be uh, fast in this kind of wars, as you should always attack and go back quickly to uh, avoid their counterattack. They are using the same strategy here, if you look closely to their radars now, they are going back after they attacked, after they engaged the Chile surface vessels, they are going back to avoid my the attacks of my attack submarines, because they know attack submarines in the high seas, they are very lethal and they are very strong. Here Sweden is helping us, he chose to join us in this war and he kept sending his cruisers in the front line which is going to be very good for us and also have cruise missiles, he launched uh, some cruise missiles there but they didn't reach their targets because the other uh, team is having a lot of frigates in the back line so frigates they will prevent everything from advancing and here Saudi Arabia he keeps sending more and more ballistic missiles on my Mallorca uh, on my Mallorca island because I'm positioning radars there in that, uh, and also an airfield for us to be able to use ASW helicopters and to use the naval recon aircrafts. I'm going to turn here and uh, send more and more frigates. 
We are waiting for Colombia to reach the front line. He is now here. He is sending 15 cruisers and another stack with the naval officer. Those cruisers, they are going to be very helpful, especially in this kind of seas. Because my attack submarines, they cannot like go in all of the kinds of the intersections here, only in the high seas. I'm going to lose them if, they, if I throw them on the shallow waters, on the coastal waters we mean. Because coastal waters, the attack submarines, they are very, very vulnerable and they are very weak in those uh, kind of waters. So I have to avoid uh, keeping them there. So what did I kill here? Yes, I killed by mistake the Swedish cruiser don't know what happened here but I think Sweden he sent his cruiser so deep there to the front line and I really didn't know that it was him and I attacked him and in one single strike I killed his stack of cruisers with my attack submarines I'm really sorry Sweden I will send him peace later and I will say sorry <laughs> that's what we say the collateral damage you have to always stay with us don't go so far from us because like that I will not be able to know who is my enemy and who is my friend you understand so in this case okay when you keep your units like that static you don't give uh, the order to attack they will only engage the enemy they will not engage an, uh, a friend you understand but here I need to command my attack submarines to attack because I'm not going to keep my attack submarines static in that case because it, it is like a fraction of a second. It is a fraction of a second in this war and you need to attack very quickly and go back. It's very important, it's very important to move fast and always uh, avoid the overstacking. Just please avoid the overstacking like this. You see here, uh, when you send like 15 submarines in the same position, when you send them attacking the same target, they, of course, when they reach the target, they will be overstacked and you will have 15 attack submarine. And when you have a 15 attack submarine in one stack, your attack and your HP and everything will be low. Of course, the attack rate, the HP will be high, but the attack, attack rate and defense rate will be down you will have the penalty of the um, overstacking. So try to avoid that because that will make you lose wars. It's very important to uh, be careful to never position your uh, naval stacks in the same position. Try to always keep just uh, a small distance between them. So here they are going back. They are going back in mass uh, after they attack. Now they are uh, trying to retreat. Maybe they want us to advance because they, they know that if we are going to advance, they, we will be in the shallow waters. Look here. Look the mistake Iran is making here. He is now officially in the shallow waters, in the coastal waters. He, he's attacked submarines. They are going to be vulnerable and an easy target for me. And especially now, when the Colombian cruisers, they will be there. They will never be affected. They are either in the coastal waters or on the high seas. It doesn't matter for the cruisers or the destroyers. So they are going to be in the front line. I am waiting for them to be in the front line so they can give us a clear access and they will clear the way for us to enter that bay from there. Also here, Cuba is overstacking. It's also a mistake. Uh, now he divided them. Good that he uh, figured, figured this out very quickly. There are a lot of stacks uh, very close to each other, so overstacking will happen a lot for you. Overstacking, we mean that you gather more than ten, uh, more than five ships in one single stack, which is going to uh, make you give you a penalty. So, what did I kill here? Ninth fighter squadron of Iran. My uh, frigates they detected the fighter squadron, Iranian fighter squadron, and they, they took it down in one single strike. So here, Iran, as I said in the first episode, Iran have more than 50 attack submarines, max level. So you can see here that his submarines are everywhere. From the south flank and from the north flank, they are everywhere. But here they are in a vulnerable position and they are going to be an easy target for us. I don't know what really what Iran is trying to do here because this attack from this side is going to be... Um, a lost cause, I'm going to kill him very quickly to be honest, especially when I keep my attack submarines in the high seas, he's going to be an easy target. 
Sweden is sending me the messages. He told me how I attacked him. I told him sorry, it was uh, a mistake and I'm going to send him peace for sure. I sent him peace and he accepted it and we are in the same side uh, and we continue our campaign. Now Colombia is on, is on the front line as expected and as planned. He should be in the front line because first the cruisers have the most number of uh, hit points here so they can be helpful so much five max level cruisers they have 375 points of hit points of uh, hp so they will protect my attack submarines they will attack uh, protect my frigate uh, he will throw himself in the front line and later on when he gets back i will send my attack submarines to strike so this is the teamwork this is the harmony and the strategy of our team here in this naval battle nothing is reckless nothing is just bombard or just attack everything is synchronized between us everyone have his own kinds of ships and he knows his points of strength and his points of weaknesses so yeah we are going to play on the scale of these points, which is very important to know your points of weaknesses and points of strength. I know that my frigates, they are very, uh, they are very weak in the naval battle, but they are very strong in the aerial battles. So we should have the frigates because let's say if they have a lot of cruise missiles. Now I don't, uh, they send some cruise missiles in the first episode. But in this now, until this uh, second, they didn't send anything. Maybe they don't have a lot of stock of cruise missiles. But as you saw in the first episode, my frigates, they took off all of their cruise missiles. Cruise missiles in the naval battles, they are very important and they are very strong, especially when they are max level. So the only thing that can counter them efficiently and with good force is the frigates. So I engaged the Turkish ship. The Iranian submarines, they are advancing there through Naples and Turkey has engaged me in the second. I think that this Turkey is a elite battleground, a, a elite battleship. I think the naval officer in that, st in that stack because I have been detecting it and I have been following, following him for a while now. I need to kill him very soon because it's very strong. It's very strong when you have a naval officer with a stack of four uh, cruisers. It's going to be very deadly and have a lot of HP points. So that is that needs to be my priority here and I need to kill it. If you look closely now to my uh, stacks of attack submarine, this stack is untouchable. It haven't been touched since the beginning of the war. This is what I am speaking about because Every time I attack, I try to avoid their counter-attack. I try to avoid it, I don't just throw my attack submarines. I attack and go back quickly to the behind line to be able to be protected behind the destroyers and the cruisers. This is now is a very hard battle between submarines here in the north of Palermo in this position. We are having me between uh, Brazil and Iran. We are having a massive submarines war in the second. It's very, very good. I like it when I have this kind of wars. It's large scale wars and very fast. You never get uh, bored. You never get um, unexcited. It's very exciting and you always focus on Okay, I killed the stack of the attack submarines. Very good. I killed one. Now let's go for the second one and let's kill it. There are still two there. My goal is to kill them all. This is my goal and this is my ultimate goal in these seconds is to kill those attack submarines that are sleeping there. Now two, they are dead. One, I killed one and Colombia killed one. And now my frigates, they killed a uh, naval patrol aircraft. This is why frigates are very important. You saw from the beginning of the war that my frigates, they are clearing all of the skies. They never let anything patrol near. They never let anything come uh, from the air. So this is a no-fly zone, a dead zone, and it's a restricted area. I'm going to help with the naval battle with my frigates. I know that the frigates doesn't have a lot of damage and they are not very uh, 
uh, strong against other ships, but of course, uh, a damage of 40 against uh, ships is not very bad. Oh, he strike me. He hit me and he is going back. You see that uh, that attack submarine, the Iranian attack submarine, is going back now. He attacked and now going back. This is the strategy I'm speaking about in the naval wars, that you always have to attack and avoid the counterattack. The Asian team is still very fortified. Okay, another attack submarine, stack of attack submarines is killed on the straight. And we are doing very fine. You see that straight now is empty. They are retreating. They are going back. They know that we are well fortified in that zone and we are well present. Now they are retreating from the straight. And maybe they will go to the south and uh, enhance their presence there. Let's have a look here uh, in the uh, news. So the casualties between me and uh, Iran, me 5,000 and Iran 40. Thousand, I guess yeah so yeah I, I, I until this stage of the war I gave a lot of damage for uh, Iran as he lost three stacks of attack submarines from me and they lost none none I didn't lose any stack until this moment I received some hits yes I received some damage but I didn't receive uh, I didn't lose anything This is um, the expertise in this battle. The expertise is doing uh, its uh, part because when you see the numbers, when you see the type of armies and the type of uh, naval armies, you can see that we are the same. We have the same thing. But what makes the difference here and the destroyer of Saudi Arabia is that, yes, so the strait is now clear. I cleared it all with my attack submarines and now we can pass quickly through that strait and we can flank them from behind. We will uh, do. Uh, we will close on them uh, near the uh, island of Valletta in the middle and we will close up on them and it's going to be the checkmate. So, uh, as I was speaking that the expertise has done its part, it's very important. So, if you saw from the first episode that we almost have the same armies as the agents have a lot, a lot of ships, a lot of attack submarines, all kinds of ships, uh, to be honest. So when you see, uh, the odds are the same. But here what made the difference, first is the teamwork. Our teamwork, we are doing very well. We are moving as a single unit. Uh, we are taking parts and ch changing the positions and also the expertise of using your uh, naval units, how to use it. You know your points of strength and the points of weaknesses. In that case, you know how to use your uh, submarines, your frigates, your cruisers, your destroyers. And of course, when you know how to really possess your army, you will be invincible and you will be very strong and unbeatable. But not yet. I know that the Asians have a, uh, another line of defense. Uh, they still have a lot of ships. We didn't really kill a lot. So this war is still going on. It's so far from being finished. Uh, they are giving, uh, they are making a retreat here as I'm um, uh, watching and as I'm uh, monitoring their blue dots and their naval radars. Uh, they are reassembling and regrouping uh, behind Valletta to be able to launch another attack and another uh, strike. Maybe their first strategy was not very strong against us. We really overcame their first strategy. It didn't our strategy was stronger and was more lethal maybe now they are changing their way of playing they are changing the strategy we will see and you will discover everything that will happen in the biggest naval battle in conflict of nation and we will see in the next episode what will happen so now let's continue there is a naval radar here uh, Colombia now is supposed to attack it because it is in his range come on Colombia attack him Oh, this is the Turkish battleship, 100% the naval officer, that is the naval officer because he kept uh, he kept going back with him, he kept like, he didn't really engage with him, he kept uh, going with it behind enemy lines, 100% that is the naval officer because he didn't want to lose it, he's not being reckless with it. He always keep it uh, behind, he always keep it far from our ships and our submarines, so yeah.
uh, my instinct is saying that that is the most important piece of this board, of this chess, and that needs to be taken down immediately. So we continue our battle in the third episode. See you guys and bye bye.